Do you have trouble getting your napkin to sit smooth and flat on a curved surface? Would you like to see one napkin used to do three projects with very little wastage? Would you like to solve the problem of how to get a napkin to sit flat on a surface that gets smaller at the bottom and wider at the top? Hello, my name is Judy West and I'd like to thank you for joining me today. Today we will look at two methods of applying a napkin to a curved surface and how separating the napkin into smaller pieces can make it easier to apply to that surface. This single napkin was used to decorate all three of the terracotta pots to make a matching set. Stay with me and I'll show you how and don't forget to push the like button and subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. The napkin I'm using today is called Rosella and I got it from Ninny's Napkins and if you check in the description below you'll see a link to the shop and a discount code for your convenience. Now the first thing I did was add white to the surface of the uh, terracotta pot and that's titanium white, it's a Joe Sonia artist colour and uh, it gives a nice light background to the napkin so that you can see the true colours of the napkin. If we put it straight on the terracotta pot we would have got a very dull finish. Now you uh, make sure you take the layers of your napkin off before you start work and if I just wrap that around the pot I would get a very um, uh, uneven finish and it wouldn't meet at the ends and I'd have to join pieces up that uh, may not match and I want this to look like a continuous all over pattern so what I'm going to do is separate each of the roses with this uh, method of using a, a wet brush and then just tearing along the wet line and I'll separate all those roses and the buds before I start. Once I've got the, all the buds separated I'm going to come in even closer to the edges so that it's not very much white around the edge because if I'm going to overlap at any place I don't want that white to uh, dull down the piece that it's overlapping. I might even have to tear off sections of the uh, stems and that sort of thing in order to get the uh, roses to butt up against each other in some places. Now this takes a little longer. If you're fussy about the finish this might be something you're interested in trying. Once I've finished tearing off all the excess napkin I then sort all the roses according to what they look like. Uh, that makes it easier for me when I'm placing the roses on the pot to be able to quickly pick up the one I want. If you've got a messed up pile like that you'll spend more time rifling through and possibly tearing the roses. This first method I'm using Mod Podge and a mix of uh, a little bit of water with it because my Mod Podge has thickened up over the years and got way too thick so I've watered it down. If you've got a new bottle you may not need to do that and I put Mod Podge on the pot first and then put the napkin down and brush over the top. As you notice that napkin had a, a straight edge at the top because it was on the edge of the napkin so I'm t using that to advantage to butt it up against the uh, rim. I brush over the whole surface and make sure that every section of that napkin is completely sealed and then I'm just going to continue on uh, placing the napkins randomly around the pot different distances apart uh, as you can see there I'm just uh, tearing off a little bit of napkin I just used the gluey brush to um, give me a wet patch to tear on. I'm going to make this look like a vine which means the stems of the roses and buds will either touch another stem or they'll come off from the top or off from the bottom of the pot and so it'll just look like an all over vine. I could have placed it like it was on the napkin um, where they just laid in midair, but I just wanted this to look more like a, a vine growing over the pot and I'll just continue around the pot finishing the whole area. 
Now notice I'm brushing from the stem out so that I can get the bubbles away or the wrinkles away. I don't want a wrinkle right where the stem is and then one stem overlapping another. I want them to just be touching so I'm moving from the stem out along the rows. Now by continuing around the pot in this manner with separate sections the uh, issue of it being narrow at the bottom and wider at the top is not a problem at all. This looks like a continuous pattern all the way around. There's no joins somewhere where something is missing. There's no cuts in it where anything is overlapping. Not all napkins can do this. This happens to have separate pieces on it that I could cut around. Uh, some napkins wouldn't lend themselves to this method, but there are quite a few if you start to look that do. Once I've finished gluing all the pieces on, I just leave that to dry now. With this second method, I have a piece of plastic, a little spray mist bottle of water, and I spray the plastic first and then put the napkin down right side to the plastic and spray all over. Now you could spread it out with your fingers as long as you're really, really careful and make sure your fingers are really, really wet. By flattening it out with your fingers, you're also pushing the water out from underneath the napkin. Once you've done that, you can tip the plastic and get all the excess water off that way. Tip it into a, a water container and then get your pot in position. I use a couple of uh, biros so that it won't roll away on me. And then I place napkin side down onto the pot and I start pressing the water out from underneath the napkin again so that the napkin adheres to the side of the pot. I've got a little piece of plastic that's flat on one edge and I'm using it like a squeegee. It's very soft and uh, it's not I'm applying just the slightest bit of pressure to that napkin. I found that was a, a handy little thing to have. It comes out of something, I don't know what it came out of, but it's, it's just the right size to push out all that excess water, but it's not too hard. It's not as hard as, say, a credit card, and it bends to this, the curvature of the surface. When I think that I've got the napkin perfectly flat, I will carefully peel away the plastic, making sure while I peel that the napkin's not sticking to the plastic. I make sure there's no water left under the napkin, I'll take some glue, a glue mix, and brush over the top of the napkin in order to adhere it to the pot. I brush from the middle out always, so that if there are any bubbles left, they dissipate at the edge. I did the same thing on the middle size pot by roughly working out that I could fit four roses on that pot, and I used this water method again. And I sprayed the surface of the pot as well, so there was plenty of, of water there, so that I could use that to float the napkin into place.
This time I added all the roses first with the water method and then I came back after that was all over and added the glue over the top. I, I had a continuous line of glue all over the pot even in between the napkins. Once the roses were dry I came back with some Jo Sonia Naphthol Crimson and I painted the rims of the pots. If we have a really close inspection of these three pots you'll notice that the two on the right have a much smoother finish than the one on the left. The one on the left I just used the glue method of brushing the glue on and then brushing over the top. On the two on the right I used that water method and now that we go in for a closer look we'll be able to see how much texture is on this pot and how much smoother this pot is and this little pot how smooth are those roses can see a bit of the fuzz where the white ends but the roses are really smooth whereas those roses aren't. Now the rough look at a distance looks great and sitting up on the, on the shelf with a plant in it it'll look wonderful. It's just you know you look at the other two and you can see the difference even at that distance um, how much smoother they are. So um, that just gives you a idea of a couple of different methods for adding your napkins and uh, alleviating the problem of the uh, pot being very small on the bottom and wide on the top. Uh, I hope that was helpful. I have actually added a, a varnish to these pots as you can see they're quite shiny there. I've added a gloss varnish from Liquitex and it has a UV component so that it protects the, uh, the napkins and the paint from UV rays. But I still, I, I would prefer to use this as an indoor pot, not an outdoor pot. And I've put the varnish inside the pot as well as on the outside as you can see there. They're quite shiny on the inside. So the varnish is inside and out. Check out the videos you can see here on Ninny's napkins and painting terracotta pots. You might find some more projects that you would enjoy doing on, in these playlists.